Hi, welcome to educators.com. I am Shravanti, your Hadoop instructor. In this module, we are going to discuss about the pain points with the older Hadoop 1.x version and the latest features of Hadoop 2.x, HDFS high availability setups, and HDFS federation. Pain points with older version of the Hadoop. In the older version, we have only one main node. That is a single point of failure. In case if our main node gets crashes and if the main node service is down, we cannot even access any of the machine inside our Hadoop clusters. Because main node consisting of your metadata information, in case if that goes down, everything is going lost. So to avoid your entire Hadoop cluster down, we have come up with standby main node. That is the high availability setups as part of the 2.x architecture. That is one of the pain points. And the another major pain point is if you are having a huge amount of the clusters, all these cluster have to be single main node. In that case, we are going to have a lot of performance problems because your main node is a single point of contact for entire machines. Even 4000 computers are there, slave machines, all these 4000 slave machines will be maintaining the metadata in that single main node. So to avoid that issues, even we can have multiple independent main nodes as well. That is the new feature in the Hadoop 2.x which we will be discussing in the next couple of slides. As we talk about, the single point of failure of the main node is one of the cause, one of the pain points, and the another one is the single namespace for the entire cluster so that if you have large deployments with a huge amount of the slay machines, it will be very troublesome and you will be having the performance issues because you are single main node has to take care about your entire cluster. So to overcome all these pain points in the 1.x architecture, we have these latest features in the 2.x, Hadoop 2.x. The one thing is the HDFS high availability and HDFS federation. Let's see what exactly the HDFS high availability, HDFS federation and how it works. As part of the HDFS high availability, as the name itself is saying that to have the high availability clusters, that means in case one of your main node goes down still, your standby main node will be available and it will be taking care about your entire cluster. And here you can have your manual failovers and automatic failovers as well. The automatic failovers are nothing but in case if your active main node goes down in the midnight, the administrator need not log in and will not start any other services. As part of your automatic failover, system will take care about starting up this standby main node and your standby main node will, will be taking care about your entire Hadoop cluster. So how exactly this high availability setup can be done is nothing more. With the help of the zookeepers, here you can see Zookeeper. this is something called zookeeper. And always it's a good practice to install your zookeepers in the odd number of the machines, either three or five like that. The reason for odd number of the zookeepers are nothing but zookeepers will be taking control about the coordination service. That means in case if this main node goes down, your zookeepers will get informed about this particular main node status. So if I let's assume I'm having an even number, that is a four zookeeper. In that four zookeepers, the two zookeepers are saying that uh, my main node went down. The two other zookeepers are saying that my main node is up and running. 
So whose decision it has to be taken? That is the reason why to avoid such kind of the issues, we always need to have the odd number of the zookeepers in place. And apart from that, we are also having another important demon called ZKFC, that is Zookeeper Failover Controller. So this ZKFC daemon will be available in active main mode and also it will be installed in your standby main mode as well. So the purpose of this Zookeeper Failover Controller is nothing but it keeps on monitoring this machine name node service and also the name node hosting and it keeps sending the updates to your zookeepers. So it is simply it monitors and sends the updates to your zookeepers. And your zookeeper will take care about your coordination decision like which is the leader and leader elections and such kind of the things can be taken care by your zookeepers. And also here you can see something called a VN. That is nothing but general nodes. The general nodes are nothing but whatever the edit log which we are having with that means the metadata information that gets stored as part of the general nodes. Because let's assume I do not have a general nodes and my metadata information exists in this active main node itself. In case if this active main node goes down we do not have any other mechanism to pull out our uh, metadata information from this last computer. That is the reason why we do have it with general nodes. This is a shared directory and your active main node and also the standby main node can access this general node directories, which consisting of your edit log information. So how exactly it works whenever your active main node is going down is nothing but your zookeeper failover controller understands that your active main node went down and then it informs all of your zookeepers. Your zookeepers will be letting the another standby main node knows about the previous main node is down and it starts this main node. So while starting the tab it requires the metadata. So your standby main node is responsible to have the access to this journal nodes and get the updated edit log information. And that is how your standby main node gets started. Everything will be done automatically. You will not be involved anywhere in between. So this is what we call it as a high availability cluster setups. So here to just give you a pointers, as we talk about here we will be having a two separate machines. One is the active main node, another one is the standby main node. You have to purchase the same configuration of the machines for both of them. As we talk about the general nodes, this general nodes is in between both the nodes like active node and also the standby node the, will read this information in the general nodes and it will place this edit log information in the general node directories. And also if you see any of the namespace modifications, that means if you are adding any of the new files, if you are updating any of the permissions or any such kind of the modifications, by your active main node what it does is it will write a log entry to your general nodes and that will be read by your uh, standby main node. When we are talking about the zookeeper, this zookeeper is works like a coordination service and what exactly it consisting of is nothing but it consisting of a coordination data that is nothing but which machine is active now, which service is active, which service is down. So it majorly does two things like a failure detection that means in case of your primary main node or standard main node, any of the main node goes down, your zookeeper get notice and your zookeeper failover controller will be starting another one, another standard main node. And also, zookeeper will be doing the active main node elections, that is, 
leader elections, which which one has to be the active, which one has to be the standby. That information also it may be that as part of your zookeepers. And the another feature, the latest feature in the Hadoop 2.x is the HDFS federation. As part of this HDFS federation, we can see few things. Like in the earlier things, we have seen there is only a single main node. But here, as part of the HDFS federation, we can have a multiple main nodes. I'm having a main node one, main node two, main node three like that. Any number of the main nodes I can have. And all of these main nodes are the independent nodes. That means one machine cannot interact with the another machine. And everybody is maintaining its own metadata information. And also, if you see this diagram over here, it will be having something called a common storage. The common storage is nothing but let's assume. I'm having a 10 data nodes. That means mine is a 10 node cluster. I'm having a 10 data node. So this 10 data nodes will be shared by your the main nodes. If I'm having example three main nodes, all my 10 data nodes will be accessed by these three that three main nodes. You cannot share your data nodes saying that the first few data nodes will be used by your main node one, and the third, fourth, fifth will be used by the main node too. Such kind of the things we cannot define. Because every time all the data nodes will be having a common storage. And you will be seeing something called a block pool. Block pool is nothing but a set of blocks. You will be having the block pool like one of the main space belongs to the main node one will be having a pool one. Now another main node two will be having something called a pool two, like that. Each and every main space under that main node will be having a different pools. So here, our HDFS federation is addressing the limitation of having a single main node. As we have seen that during the larger deployment, having a single main node is leads to the performance degradations. So with the help of this main node federation, you can have a multiple independent main nodes. And also, you will be having a data node with the common storage. And few things you have to understand over here is, this data node will be sending a heartbeat signal to all the main nodes. Suppose if I'm having a three main node, all my 10 data nodes will be sending a heartbeat signal saying that I'm alive and this much percentage of the mine is storage capacity is filled up or will such kind of these heartbeat signals will be sent to all the main nodes. And also a point to remember each and every main node is independent. In case if one of the machine, one of the main node is going down, the another main node does not get any information about that. In that case you can access all the files only except this main space which is lost. So the advantage of this HDFS federation is nothing but main space scalability. That is nothing but you can have a large number of the main nodes as well, which will be helpful in a bigger deployments. In terms of the performance, Whenever you are having a more main nodes, you can see a better uh, throughput at the time of the even writings and the readings as well. And also, you will be having this isolation. That is nothing more. Whenever you are having the multiple main nodes, if you are having the different main spaces, like a, a few of the main space is consisting of the information related to the HR. The another thing is related to the information about some services. Such kind of the different namespaces are there. And it can have a separation, isolation between these namespaces with the help of your HDFS federation. Summary. So in this module, we discussed about the pain points with the one dot architecture. 
especially with this, having a single main node, it is a single point of failure which leads to the entire machine, entire Hadoop cluster will be going down. To avoid that, we, we are talking about the HDFS high availability, where in case you can have another standard main node, in case your active main node goes down, your standard main node will be available and uh, it will take care about your entire cluster. With the help of the zookeepers and the journal nodes, these automatic failovers can happen. And there is a another uh, pain point with the older version. There is nothing there. You will be having a single main node. So in the larger deployments, when you are having a huge amount of the machines, it leads to the performance degradations because you have all the data file, all the main spaces have to be managed by your single main node. To avoid that, you can have your multiple main nodes. But these multiple main nodes are the independent main nodes and one cannot interact with the another one. Because of this HDFS federation, we can even improve the performance and we can even have these uh, isolation between the main spaces and a lot of advantages. Thank you. Let's catch up in the next module.